There are a whole heap of exciting new cars coming in the next few years, and in this video I'm going to give you a complete A to Z guide of the brands which have just announced some new models. There they are. Pininfarina Batista is one of the fastest and most expensive electric cars you can buy, but the Anniversario version is even more reassuringly expensive. It produces 1900 horsepower and 2300 newton meters of torque. That means it'll do 0 60 in less than two seconds. It also gets some new aero tweaks and wheels and tyres, so it's even faster than the standard car. How does 217 miles an hour sound? Pretty good, eh, for an electric car? Only thing is, just five will be made, each in an exclusive two-tone paint job that you won't see on the normal Batista, if a Batista could ever be described as normal. Renault loves to wheel out a futuristic concept car, and this year they built something called the Morphos. I think that's how it's said. It's supposed to show us what electric cars in 2025 will look like, and there might be some truth to that because it uses Renault's new electric vehicle platform. Instead of choosing a trim level, you choose a city or travel model. These are pretty much identical, except the travel version is 40 centimeters longer and has a much bigger battery. They both get sliding rear seats, a swiveling passenger seat, and a retractable steering wheel that doubles as an infotainment screen. Polestar has revealed a new four-door coupe rival for the Porsche Taycan. It's called the Preset, and it shows what future road cars from the Swedish brand will look like. An integrated spoiler in the bonnet and cameras instead of wing mirrors make it as aerodynamic as possible. And it uses plant-based composite for some body panels that are lighter than plastic and produce less waste. Inside, you get a couple of large screens and Polestar's signature gold seat belt, just like in the S60 Polestar. Polestar hasn't confirmed how fast the preset is or how far it can go between charges. However, it has said that it comes with the kind of high-tech sensors reserved for the most advanced autonomous driving systems. Not sure what that'll mean. Maybe the car can just drive itself. The new Porsche 911 992 is a pretty quick car, but this new range-topping 911 Turbo S promises to be an absolute monster. Let's start with the looks though. It's wider, lower and angrier than the standard 911, thanks to new bumpers, lots of new intakes, wider haunches and four massive exhaust pipes. The 3-litre turbocharged flat-six engine now makes 650 horsepower and it drives all four wheels through an 8-speed PDK dual-clutch automatic gearbox. As a result, it can do 0-60 to in 2.7 seconds and will go on to a top speed of 205 miles an hour. The suspension is lower and firmer than the standard 911 as well to improve the handling and you get an adjustable rear wing to help keep the Turbo S glued to the tarmac at high speed. As for the price, while well, you're looking at more than £150,000. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen, you can watch our drag race between the Porsche 911 Carrera 4S against an Audi R8, an AMG GT four-door, and a BMW M8. If you don't want a German or Spanish hot hatch, how about a Czech one? Well, Skoda's revealed its new Octavia VRS. This new model ditches the old car's petrol engine, and now it gets a 1.4-litre petrol engine plus an electric motor, which means it's only available as a plug-in hybrid. In fact, it's the same system you get in the new Cooper Land. So, surprise, surprise, it makes exactly the same 245 horsepower as that car. Now, this gets fed to the front wheels only through a six-speed automatic gearbox. As a result, it can do 0-60 to in 7.3 seconds and hit 140 miles an hour. So, it's not exactly the quickest hot hatch out there. However, if you want the hot hatch with the most pedigree, then check out the new Volkswagen Golf GTI. Obviously, it looks very much like the standard Golf, but it does get some extra red trim, cool fog lights, and new alloy wheels, plus bigger exhaust. Inside, you get some GTI signature Titan seats and some new graphics for the two digital screens. Underneath the bonnet is a 2-litre turbocharged engine with 245 horsepower, which is good for 0-60 to in around 6 seconds. There's also a 200 horsepower GTD diesel version that's a bit slower but cheaper to run, and then there's the GTE Hybrid, which uses the same 1.4 litre petrol engine combined with an electric motor to produce 245 horsepower that you get in the Skoda Octavia VRS.